Come on, can we say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. Always good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Yes, amen. I love to come and worship with God's people. Hallelujah. I love to be in the house of the Lord. And then we just praise Him together. We're bringing the Spirit of the Lord. God bless the Lord at all times. Amen. His praise shall continually to be in my mouth. Right. Let's just do that tonight. Let's just pray our hands. Let's just love him. Amen. We lift our hands unto you, Lord, tonight. We just praise you, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We just pray you God. Oh, we give you glory. We give you honor. Oh, we give you glory. We give you honor. Just, uh, he can't keep it on, you know. I mean, it's just uh, real simple. 
sad and I'm just here trying to somehow be instrumental and right. help him and not uh, offend him either, you know. Right. Uh, but anyway, right. just so tough. Pray the Lord to be with you. Show me what you say or do. Amen. Right. Yes, sir. Good to have our visitor and I forgot what your name. Oh, I've been here before. It's uh, been a while. Okay. I've been out of town, Charlotte. Charlotte. Okay, Charlotte. It's so, nice to have you in the house. A granddaughter named Charlotte. Really? All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember our neighbor, Brandon. He's been in uh, chemotherapy. It's not working. Abundantly above all that we've been asked for even think. I have several praise reports. Um, would like to um, thank the Lord and everyone for praying for my dad. Um, things were not looking good, and his uh, creatin counts. I always want to say it wrong, <laughs> but um, his kidney numbers were increasing. Um, Monday they were at 2.8. They said if it gets to 3.0, then he has to um, have a dialysis, call it dialysis. And, um, but anyway, um, today when I went in there, um, his number was down to 2.7 yesterday. Today it's 2.6, so it's going the right direction. Yes. Thankful for that. Jesus. His uh, blood you, platelet count um, has, over the past year and a half, has stayed pretty high. It's been kind of in the 700s. Um, in October, when he was in the hospital, it got to 978, which is really, really bad. Uh, his doctors read the lab and about had a heart attack. <laughs> but um, so when I asked the nurse this morning um, what his platelet count, she goes, oh, it's really high. And I was like, oh, dear Jesus. And she said, it's 610. It's like, oh, <laughs> for him, that, that, that's pretty good. That's really good. <laughs> we'll take that. Yes, amen. Um, but so good news on that. Um, they did have to give him a third transfusion today but um, the most marked improvement was his strength since he's been in the hospital he's not been able to even shift himself to bed without assistance he, he just has not had the strength he hasn't been able to do it at all even yesterday the nurse um, there was a male nurse there who was helping him they got him up and got his bed changed and everything but the male nurse had to completely lift him he couldn't could not do anything and this morning they said he got up on his own. Now he can't walk, but he had the strength and got up with hardly any assistance. Hallelujah. To me, <laughs> that's God. Amen. And I had requested prayer on three things specifically that um, his uh, the fluid would start coming off, and it is. Um, they are very <laughs> pleased with the fluid moving and his kidney numbers are going down. I requested specifically for that. Uh, and I requested specifically that God would help him regain his strength. And I am really thankful today. God has been merciful. I told the Lord, I, you know, I know there's going to come a point when my parents, it'll be their time. And I made my peace with it, but because I don't want to see my dad suffer, but um, I told the Lord, I just want him ready. You know, nothing else matters. Right. But, um, you know, if God would spare him, that makes me happy too. <laughs> so I'm thankful for the prayers and for what God is doing. Um, uh, next prayer request, we've been praying for Robert Wood. Um, they found a spot of cancer on his neck. Um, they were concerned that it might have spread to other parts of his body. He went for a a full body scan down in Dallas um, Sunday and the only spot is right there and the doctor said he could just treat it with radi radiation over um, he'll do I think six weeks going five times a week um, and he 
told him to bulk up with his eating that you know he would probably drop a lot of weight but I told his wife I said we're gonna pray that maybe when they go to do the first treatment there's nothing there to treat right amen. and if there is that, that there is yes. no side effects amen. God has done that before too um, yes. we amen. pray for people who've had to go through chemo and radiation Right. And it didn't affect them. And I'm very thankful for that. So, praise report number two. Uh, praise report number th number three. Um, I was, um, I've been talking to my husband about the need for a handicapped bathroom. Um, I know Sister Jenny Weatherly is pretty much in a wheelchair anymore. And our restrooms here in the church, um, there's just not any way to really make them handicap accessible. We can't go anywhere with them. And so we've talked about over in the Fellowship of Paul, we've got the two restrooms side by side, and we talked about um, just removing the wall and making it one restroom, putting in a bigger door for a wheelchair to be able to get in there, and putting a pedestal sink, you know, just make it easy for somebody. And then we would... Um, get this back door uh, fixed where they can just go straight out the door to the fellowship hall. And um, my brother has usually done work for us in the past, but he is really booked out for a couple months or so. And I've been wanting to kind of just really been feeling to get on this. And so I started um, asking around in the community for some recommendations. Um, I found several people and spoke to one guy. He was going to come by and give me a bid and see what it would cost to have him, you know, do this. And last night I couldn't sleep. It was one of those nights you just toss and turn, a, a lot going on. And um, so I was thinking, you know, about this bathroom remodel. I was like, Lord, it would be so nice if, you know, one of these people who come by to give a bid would just offer to donate the labor. <laughs> Yeah, right. You know, what? I didn't even speak it out loud. I just, you know, that thought was just going through my head. Sure. I was talking to my, I was visiting my dad today, and I was talking to my husband on the phone. He had called and given him an update on dad. And then as soon as I hung up, I got a text. And Sister Gwen had texted me and said, Danny, her husband, um, told me that, to, or to, said to let me know that his guys would do the bathroom remodel at material cost. They would donate all their labor. <laughs> and so I, I texted her back. I said, you're kidding me. <laughs> and I explained. I said, just last night I was praying that God would just let somebody donate their time and labor. <laughs> and she said, well, he said, God, you know, he, Danny heard, heard that prayer because he said the thought just popped into his mind wow. about donating the labor. So wow. I'm thankful yeah. for that. So Amen. I contacted the a few of the people, the man who was supposed to come give a bid, and I, I thanked him for his time. And I said somebody had just donated, you know, the labor costs and he said that was fine and um, I get a call from him this afternoon and he wanted to know how big our project was and my husband was home so he told me and what we thought the square footage would be when we do this and he said I have some tiles that you know if you if you want to use them you're welcome to use the you know the tile for the floor I'll just donate them to you <laughs> So it's like, well, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, man. <laughs> Keeps thank getting you, better and better and better. Yes, amen. And praise no. report number four. Um, I've been requesting prayer for a situation. Um, I can't go into details, but it's just one that's kind of had me troubled, had me concerned on a situation that could blow up. And it seems like God has just fought the battle and it's not going to be an issue and I'm thankful right. it's you know this year has started out um, 40 days of fire oh, <laughs> there's been some stirring <laughs> I've been to three ER visits 
you know, Brother Mike a couple of hours, Sister Sandra was there when her brother had emergency bypass surgery for a couple of hours, and then seven hours with Dad in the ER, and then every day in the hospital ever since. So my husband goes to visit Lowell, you know, and first time connecting with him in many years, and we're talking about how to get him to church, and then he passes away, and it's like, Lord, bang, 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 bang. <laughs> but there is victory. Yeah, and I keep thinking um, today, you know, what I mentioned the other day, victory in our praise. Praise precedes victory. Yes. And, you know, there there may be some very challenging things, but God gets the glory Amen. when he answers the prayer. And I'm thankful for what God is doing and what he's going to do. Um, and I just want to give him praise. I don't want to ever forget to thank him. Right. You know, the man in the Bible, you know, the, the, the lepers, you know, who came to him. And yeah. Jesus healed them all. But only one returned. And he's the only one that Jesus made whole. Right. You know, the others, right. they got their healing, but they weren't made whole. The right. man who came back and thanked him made, was made whole. And yeah. Um, the Bible also tells us we overcome by the, by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And um, just thankful to God tonight. Amen. Um, so much to be thankful for. Um, let's remember Sister Sandra and Thomas Jr., Thomas Sr. He is um, recovering at her home, and I know she had to take him to the ER again uh, the other day. It turns out he was real dehydrated. Um, but just it's requiring a lot of care and I know she's not in the best of health so let's keep her in your prayers. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah. Let's pray for Sister Connie. Um, they um, they did find there is an infection in the scar tissue. There's no cancer but um, they were going to be doing putting a wound back on her and I told her we would be praying that infection heals up immediately Amen. in Jesus name and uh, that God will just encourage them I talked with her on the phone the other day and God's doing some great things right. um, and uh, let's just pray for their family um, I know she doesn't like to miss church and uh, there's just been so much going Let's remember the others, uh, Sister Gwen and Sister Jenny, Kay and Lisa, JR and Sierra and Brother Jimmy, um, yeah. Sister Joanne. Let's remember Randy and Jenny um, and um, the Blakeneys um, and this new um, uh, family that's coming uh, with the little girl. Let's pray that God will continue to bless them too. Um, I would like prayer. Um, I have started a support group for parents um, and caregivers of special needs and workers um, felt led last year to do it uh, when we were doing our 40 days of fire really felt it strongly God gave me the name and everything for it um, but with health issues and parents in the hospital and all kinds of things I just did not get off the ground so I have got it going and this the first Tuesday of this next month, we will have a meeting over the fellowship hall um, from 7 to 8. And just pray that God would bless it, um, that it would be a, a great encouragement to someone and maybe be, maybe be a witness, you know, a way to reach out and be a witness to somebody of who right. God is, right. the hope that is in God. Um, I think it is something that, that is so much needed because sometimes dealing with special needs can be a very lonely path. Um, it can be very discouraging, very overwhelming, and pray that God would just let his hope shine through me, that you know I can have words of encouragement to speak to somebody, and that his blessings will be upon us, and um, that it will be a good thing.
had a knee surgery and uh, they replaced the knee, I believe, and so it's great for him to do his recovery. He's good on that. Uh, and uh, we'll just continue to pray for Sister Ann. She's not with us tonight. She was just too, too, too big with her own duty to stay on. So uh, so let's really pray for her. She only needs to breathe. in our 
our praise and tonight will be answered in prayer. Yes, amen. It says that God has already has the answer. Amen. Already on the way. Jesus. Before we even pray, He knows our hearts and He knows just what we need. He knows. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. I love to feel the presence of the Lord, don't you?
God's going to do a great thing. Hallelujah. Uh, community service, Sunday, February 5th. Uh, revival services, Saturday, February 11th, 6.30 p.m. Sunday, February 12th, 10 a.m. Brother and Sister Mark, Christy Garza, God bless them. That's going to be an awesome service. Yes, amen. Yes. Revival. Hallelujah. Everyone says revival. Amen. All right, I heard it. <laughs> amen. Revival. revival. Yes, amen. amen. Glory. All right. Brother Bunch. God is, but yet you also, as you study the Word of God, you find that God requires that things are done right. Amen. Brother Gary talked about truth earlier. Amen. Worship Him in spirit and in truth. Amen. There are people that get all excited about God, and uh, one preacher said, doesn't matter how high you jump in the air, but it's how straight your feet walk when you hit the ground. <laughs> 
Amen. It's real easy to get all excited and look real good when we come to church, but when we walk away from church, what are we doing? Who are we? What are we like? And the Lord knows. That's the interesting part about this. Amen. And uh, and I felt impressed early on to <clears throat> early on today to get into this. We we talk about this periodically. We are on forty days of fire, and this is a time where we spend uh, forty days and we dedicate Bible reading, we dedicate prayer, fasting. There are uh, several different fasts that we will be doing on this. One is pick a day to fast. One is a Daniel's fast, which is no meat, no sweet, no bread. Mm -hmm. This week we're on a media fast, which means we've cut out all of our media. That is unnecessary. I mean, if you work, you've got to be on a computer and so on. But that's that's what we're fasting. And uh, we've got a teenager that is killing. <laughs> it is absolutely killing him. But he's hanging in there. Amen. He's being tough. And uh, next week will be interesting because we're going to fast for negative speaking. Yes. Now, actually, we ought to be doing that all the time. But yes. <laughs> to actually make a conscious thought. That during this next week we're not going to speak negatively and uh, it is not until you start thinking about that you start realizing how much we can say that is negative and uh, and doesn't have to be worded the way it is amen I mean there's facts in life we have to deal with that you stub your toe it's gonna hurt it's not speaking negative it hurts <laughs> right. amen you know but uh, when you mumble and grumble and bad mouth whoever put whatever was there and you know how it, then it starts getting negative amen when we start trying to blame someone else and then uh week five is a meaningful fast it's where you're going to give up something you enjoy for the lord whether it's coffee whether it's could be media again could be sweets could be whatever you choose to fast from something that is important to you so that you can show the Lord that week, Lord, I'm thinking about you, and every time I want this, I'm going to think of you. I'm going to say, thank you, Lord, I gave that up for you. Amen. And then finally, there will be a fast church fast day on the final week, and we'll fast one day that week. And then, of course, as you notice, we'll have the revival services with Brother and Sister Garza, and we are so looking forward to having them here with yes, us. Amen. So, a lot of this 40 days of fire, along with the Bible reading and everything that we're doing to get closer to God, you'll see is based on what? Fasting. And what is fasting? Amen. The world has a lot of different concepts on fasting. Every religion has concepts on fasting. But what does God have to say about fasting? What's God interested in? How does it work? What is it for? Is there a purpose to it? And, uh, and we've studied out of the book of Isaiah before, Isaiah 58, and God literally uh, tells Israel how they're supposed to fast and gets on to them for how they've been fasting and how wrong it is because they were completely off the mark. And so when we fast, we want our fast to be effective. Right. We're not doing this to suffer. This is not because we're into pain. It's not because we're into torture. Amen. It's because we want to please God. We want God's favor. And we want God to be able to do an incredible work. But we'll find out when we read Isaiah 58, God wants us to do some things. Amen. Sometimes it's like, well, I'm going to trade my Big Mac for a blessing. <laughs> Amen. You know, it don't work that way. Okay? And, uh, and that's not the purpose of the fast. The purpose of the fast is to help someone. It's to do some good. It's to accomplish something that only God can do. Yes. Amen. And so we're noticing in the testimonies, we're noticing that God is doing some things. Yes. He's speaking to some people's hearts. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, uh, and we're, trying to, we're trying to navigate through it and figure it all out and, and see what God wants. But we're going to start out in Isaiah 58. And uh, this is the Lord speaking through Isaiah to Israel. And in the beginning of this, he is not happy with them. And we'll get a little bit of understanding here, hopefully, as we read this. Amen. In uh, Isaiah 58, 1, he says, Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. So you can already tell this is going to be a bumpy road. 
Amen. God is telling Isaiah, you need to say this loud, you need to say it long, you need to get this message out. Amen. Because Israel is sinning. As we're going to find out, you're going to go, how's that? And then you're going to understand why. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word tonight. We yeah. thank you for your anointing that breaks the yokes and bonds of sin. That's why we're here tonight, God. We want freedom. We want liberty. We want to be pleasing in your sight. So we pray for your word that it will have free course into our hearts and let our minds be sensitive to the Holy Ghost and the word of God as you talk to us and as you work through us. And the church said in Jesus' name, amen. amen, amen. God help us. All right. He says in verse 2, Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as, catch that, as a nation that did righteousness. Hmm. And forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wow, this is kind of strange. It's kind of unusual. He says they're talking like they are doing just fine. Like we are best friends. We are just tight. And like they are just the most righteous nation they are just doing so awesome and so wonderful uh, as if they should be able to ask me for anything just I should grant it all right and look at what they're asking for ordinances and justice you know what they're asking for God whoop my enemy and whoop them good <laughs> yeah <laughs> And God is like, huh? Really? That's what you want me to do? Amen. You act like you've got, you've got it all going on and you are doing it just right and you are pleasing me and you want me to go out and whoop everybody? Verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they? Now they're getting indignant with God. And thou seest not. You don't even see what we're doing, God. I went without my Big Mac today. Amen. I gave up my Hershey bar. Just so that you could, yeah. You don't even see it. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? Oh, it's getting deep. And thou takest no knowledge? This is the way they're talking to God. Okay, if you were the Lord at this point, click. You just turn them off. Amen. We're talking about what God's interested in. Right. This is what he's getting, but it's not what he's interested in. He says, Behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exact all your labors. In other words, whatever you gave up, you more than replaced it with something better for you. You didn't suffer. You made up for it somewhere else. You exacted all your, you got all your reward. You rewarded yourself. I'm such, I'm so good. I can't believe I fasted that. Oh man, that is just awesome. Go around telling everybody, oh, I fasted for the Lord. The old, we, we, we see this in Israel. The priests would, they would get all grimy and grubby looking and wear these long faces and stand out on the street corner and go, Oh, it's me, I'm fasting for God. Oh, oh, it's me, I'm fasting and praying. He says, you got your reward. You want all that attention? You got your reward. Because this is not to impress anybody but God. When we fast, it's between us and the Lord. Yes. Not to impress the church, not to impress our mate, it's not to impress our kids. This is to get a hold of God. Amen. When it's done in the right perspective. All right. All right. Verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure and exact all your labors. Verse 4. Behold, this is what you're fasting for. You fast for strife. You're fighting with somebody. 
You got problems with somebody and you want God to fix it. Debate. You want to win the argument. And you're fasting for this. To smite with the fist of wickedness. You want to whoop somebody. You want to hurt them. You don't just want to knock them around. You want to hurt them. That's the spirit behind the fast. All right. He says, you shall not fast as you do this day to make your voice to be heard on high. So remember what I said, fasting is to get God's attention. Amen. But somehow they had missed the mark. And if they could miss the mark, moi, we can too. Amen. We need our hearts to be right in this process. This is, this is something that God can honor, bless. Do. Oh, it's incredible. Verse 5. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? He's mocking them right now, but this is what they were doing. They would put down a, a, a blanket and they would put ashes on it and they'd sit in ashes and they'd sprinkle ashes all over them and they'd have these long faces and they'd make this pitiful situation as if they were just at the end of the world. He says, you think that's what I want? No, that's not what he's after. Verse 6. Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness. Yes, amen. To undo heavy burdens. To let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. The fast that God wants. What he wants the purpose to be behind the lap, the fast. Amen. Is that the bands of wickedness would be broken. We see a world around us that's always been this way. That is tormented by evil. Whether it is the devil. Whether it is the people that are succumbing to his desires there are there's so much wickedness around us amen and on your fasting negative speaking <laughs> that's one you got to be careful on because we like to point out everybody who's wicked we like to figure out who's this and what they're doing and how they're doing no don't go there amen. amen but you can pray for them and what did jesus say for our enemies Pray for your enemies. Right. Pray for those that despitefully use you, those that mistreat you, those that speak bad of you. Pray for them. Okay? One, and I've said this before, it's possible nobody else is praying for them. And God will hear your prayer, and God will reach down and save them. And they may make it to heaven because of you praying for them. You think, well, they won't go to hell. I won't go to hell. Remember, our spirit in this. What's this about? Amen. It's not about getting revenge. It's not about getting equal, if even. It's not about paying people back. Amen. It's about God having his way. And what does the scripture say? God's not willing, does not want anybody to perish. That's right. All right? Now, I will say this. <clears throat> if they don't repent, and they've mistreated you, and you've been kind and prayed for them, bless their hearts. Amen. He said in one place it's like dumping buckets of fiery coals over their heads. It's not going to be pretty. Amen. But we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to request that. We should not be aiming for that. Our desire should be that the wickedness is undone. That if they are wicked, that God would deliver them from that. And that they would start making right their wrongs. This is God's will. Amen. And that's what should be our will. All right. To undo the heavy burdens. There are illnesses, there are financial problems, there are judicial problems, there are all kinds of marital problems, there are all kinds of people problems, there are, oh, heavy burdens. Things that are too heavy for people to carry. And many people carry burdens that nobody but God knows about. Amen. And if we find out about that, we should be the ones who take those burdens to the Lord. He says, cast all your cares on him. Because he cares. Amen. And it should be our desire. We wouldn't want to have to carry that load. So we should be willing to pray for others so they don't have to carry that load. 
And many times it's because of sin. And he says to let the oppressed go free. And there are so many bound by drugs, alcohol, jealousy, bitterness, anger, resentment, on and on and on. So many things that people are oppressed by. And he says, and that ye, you, me, break every yoke. Everything that hinders us in our walk with God. This is why we fast. So that we can be pleasing in his sight. So that whatever we ask, he can do it. Amen. Amen. This is his desire. And this is what it should be for the church. This is, this is the work of God. Verse 7. Is it not, and he's talking now about, this is what God sees a fast. All right? It's not about getting even with your enemies. It's not about paying anybody back. It's not about revenge. <clears throat> he said, verse 7. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, and that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh? Amen. Mm. You know, it's kind of like when they've tried to text you or call you a hundred times, and you ain't answering that phone. <laughs> Amen. We hide ourselves from our own flesh. Because oh, I know what they want. Uh -uh, I ain't going there. Amen. God help us to be fair, to be just, to be right. This is God. Amen. That's what he's looking for. <clears throat> now, if we can do these things, if we can fast with these kind of motives, if we can dedicate ourselves to the Lord with this kind of purpose, listen to what God says, verse 8. Then shall thy light break forth this morning, Thine health shall spring forth speedily. Thy righteousness shall go before thee. And the glory of the Lord shall be thy rearward. Amen. So God will bless you to be able to see clearly. All right? He will take care of things. He will bless your health. And he will heal you. And your righteousness will always be going before you. And guess who's protecting you from behind? God is. He's your rearward. We live in a world where everybody's worried about everything. COVID just showed us how paranoid and how worried people are. Yeah. And there are still people that are feeling the effects of that. Amen. Because they're afraid of what sneaks up on them. They're afraid of what might get them. Amen. Amen. The child of God doesn't have to be. Amen. All right. Amen. There's no sickness he doesn't know about. There's no pestilence. There's no disease. Amen. There's no right. enemy. There's no God knows all about all of it. Yes, amen. Amen. And so all we have to do is be where he wants us, when he wants us, doing what he wants. Right. Having his spirit, his attitude, his outlook. I will say this. It takes the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Our flesh. Oh, yeah. Our flesh. Come on. We'll stop there for just a moment. One of the reasons they were having so much trouble is they were trying to please God in their flesh. The flesh wants revenge. The flesh wants pleasure. The flesh wants justification. The flesh, everything that they were doing was the flesh. All right? The Spirit of God. Gospel of John in the, in the New Testament, he talks about what God is. God is love. God is compassion. God is understanding. God is caring. And so what is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, gentleness, meekness, faith, temperance, godliness. Okay? Those are the fruits of the Spirit. So if we have the Holy Ghost, like they got on the day of Pentecost, uh -huh. book of Acts, Lord. amen, then our spirit should be like his spirit because we're trying to yield to the Holy Ghost. We're trying to be what the Holy Ghost wants to speak. Now, the initial evidence of that was speaking in other tongues. There was a, a spiritual experience that God confirmed it when they got the Holy Ghost, when we got the Holy Ghost, amen, we were blessed to be able to speak in a prayer tongue, an unknown tongue, no need for an interpreter. This was not the gift of tongues. This was the initial evidence of the Holy Ghost being poured out. Just like what Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3, when Nicodemus came to him in the middle of the night, he said, marvel not, but I say you must be born again of the water and of the Spirit. Baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, the wind blows wherever it chooses. You hear the sound thereof. He said, so is everyone that's born of the Spirit. Yes. There's a sound connected. Yes. You can't see where the Holy Ghost is coming from, and you can't see where it's going, but the moment somebody gets the Holy Ghost, 
you're going to hear them speaking in an unknown tongue. And that's how the disciples knew in, in Cornelius' household that the Gentiles got the Holy Ghost. That's how the disciples that Paul ran into, they were disciples of John the Baptist, Acts chapter 19. They got the Holy Ghost. He knew it. They spoke in other tongues. But the fruit of the Spirit is where we're tuning into tonight. The fruit of God's Spirit. When we walk in the Spirit, we walk in compassion. God's going to take vengeance. Here's another one. Hollywood pushes so much vengeance and revenge today. It's all about that's 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 all the storylines just about. It's all about revenge and getting vengeance. But let me tell you something. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Right. I will repay. What happens when we get vengeance? That means we take it out of God's hand and say, you're not doing a good enough job. I'm going to do it myself. You know what God says? Fine. I'm taking their judgment and throwing it on you. And if we think about that, we don't want to get revenge. Oh, amen. First of all, we are not built to handle it. Okay? Amen. This is why the Bible teaches us to forgive and to love. We have all been hurt by somebody somewhere, and some people have really been hurt. And there's no way they could get vengeance. There's no way they could pay back those people for what happened. And if they have that desire to get revenge and vengeance, it will eat them up. They can't handle that. They can't deal with that. They have to be able to give it to God. They have to be able to turn it over to him and pray for whoever hurt them and pray God bless them. And God will take care of it. As I said earlier, God tried to save them. And if they'll repent, man, it's a win. But if they won't, then God will deal with it. And there, you and I don't have to carry this remorse, this sorrow, this hatred, this anger, this vengeance. I've got to get revenge. We don't have to. You want to talk about a load being lifted off your shoulders? When you cast all your cares on him all right. and you let him take care of your rear work, you trust him to fight your battles? You trust him to take care of your enemies? Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. This is a whole other world. And many <coughs> quote, quote, Christians don't know it. This is the unfortunate part of it. Amen. It's so sad that we can go into life and we can be Christians and we can be living for God. And I say that loosely because the Jews were living for God and God said, you make me sick. He was so fed up with the way that they were going about their religiosity. That's quite a word right there. <laughs> they were all wound up and they were, they were some kind of spiritual dynamo and they made God want to gag. He couldn't stand it. He hated it. But he let them know that if they would go about his way, he would bless them. Let's continue on. He said in verse 9, Then shalt thou call... And the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. Yeah. If thou take away, if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, that's hindering other people, trying to control other people, trying to manipulate other people. You'll take away the yoke, the putting forth of the finger. Oh, it's all your fault. It's all your fault. You did this and this. And, oh, I know what's going on. And I got all this figured out. And speaking vanity, vanity is emptiness. Okay, it's a lie. That's not. It's it's empty. There's no. It's not even real. But people get caught up in this, justifying their works. He said, "If you'll stop that stuff, I'll bless you." Right. Verse ten: If thou draw out thy soul to the hungry, satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity, thy darkness be as noonday, and the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought. And make thy bones fat, not your body, your bones. Thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be of thee, your seed, your, your family, shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. And thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. This is what God's after. Amen. 
That's why we want to teach on this. That's why we want to talk about it. Because if I know what he wants, you remember the saying, if mama ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. If God ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. Amen. That's the truth. Amen. But on the other hand, if God's happy, yes. everybody's happy. Uh, we're blessed. Yes, amen. Even people yes. that are in sin are blessed because we're praying for them. And God's trying to save them. It's an incredible arrangement. That's his will, not our will. All right. Now, it takes faith to pray for your enemy. Can I get an amen? Amen. <laughs> amen. Because <laughs> I don't want to pitch the head off. I don't want to pray for them. Yeah. But the Lord said, if you'll turn them over to me, if there's any good that can come out of this, I'm going to find it. I'm going to get it. And this is going to be awesome. If not, fine. Because God is a judge. He will judge the world. He will judge the fallen angels. Amen. He's capable of it. You and I, not so. Because revenge will eat our lunch. It always does, always has. We'll go through life hating people who don't even know we exist. Think about that. We've all known somebody who is so mad at somebody. They did me wrong. And, I never... and the person who did it, we don't even think about it. Yes. And, 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 <clears throat> are you kidding me? That happened 40 years ago. I ain't proud of anything. And you're still ate up with it. Yes. And you got ulcers and you got all kinds of trouble. And God says, cast it on me. Pray for them. Forgive them. You can get a hold of them. Tell them I'm praying for you. God told me to forgive you. And you know what will happen? The Holy Ghost will show you. Peace will show you. Yes, amen. amen. Yes, amen. And you will find healing. And you will find blessings that God wants to give to you. Yes, amen. Go back to the Old Testament dire situations. Remember when Esther, read the book of Esther sometime. It's an incredible story. The Jews are in captivity. They have been because they were so backslid. God let them all get hauled off to Babylon. Babylon. <clears throat> but in that process, there's a young maid there, Esther. And she doesn't even admit or acknowledge she is a Hebrew. But the king, the queen falls in disfavor with the king. And the king has her removed and opens up the portal to any ladies that want to have access to be the queen. And, of course, they go through their regular testing and checking and preparing and whatever they do. And Esther wins. God gives her favor. And she's the queen. But the hitch man, <laughs> that's what I call him anyway, Haman, he was the king's right-hand man, hated the Jews. Her uncle that was raising her and taking care of her hated Haman. Because Haman was wicked and evil, and there was no way that Mordecai was going to acknowledge him or give him credit or reverence or anything. And because of that, Haman hated Mordecai, and Haman set up a plot to destroy all the Jews in Babylon. Well, Babylon was the kingdom of the world at that time. So Haman got laws passed with the king to destroy and wipe out the whole Jewish nation. And Mordecai contacts his niece, who is the queen, and says, you got to go before the king. And she says, I haven't even seen him in a month. And the law of the Medes and the Persians is, if you go into the king's presence without an invitation, you have two options. One, the king will raise his scepter up to you and say, come on in. The other is you get beheaded for intruding into the king's affairs. She didn't know what to do. He said, well, if you don't, God will raise deliverance up somewhere else. And you're going to lose out. Amen. And so she says, get everybody praying. Get everybody fasting. Amen. Three days, no food, no water. Bombard heaven. And in three days, I'm going before the king. Amen. We're talking about why is the purpose of this fast. Amen. It was for all the people, the Jews. 
she stood in the balances as far as she knew. As far as Mordecai I knew. She didn't ask to be there. But she knew that this is where I'm at. This is what I have to do. And so everyone prayed and fasted. What do you think God did? Oh, man. You got to read the story. It's awesome, man. Yes. She goes before the king. He is so thrilled to see her. He is over the moon. He is just ecstatic to see her. He says, whatever you want, you can have it. She said, in a couple of days, I want to have dinner with you and Haman. Haman is thinking, oh, 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 oh yeah, woo, we got it going. Amen. But what he didn't know was God was setting him up because he was building a gallows to hang Mordecai. All right. And the queen revealed his plans to the king. And then it looked like when he was trying to plead with her to get mercy and forgiveness, it looked like he was trying to accost her. The king said, and now you're going to go after my wife? And he said, got a bag put over his head and he's hauled off. He winds up being hung on Mordecai's gallows that were in his own yard. All of his belongings and everything that he had including his role in the kingdom, second to the king, is given to Mordecai. Amen. Deliverance was brought to the Jews. They were given free reign to attack anybody that was going to mess with them and take whatever they wanted. They didn't, but they had that opportunity. Amen. God more than blessed. Yes, amen. Fasting is powerful when we do it in the right spirit. When we do it in the spirit that God wants us to do it in. Amen? She was not fasting to hurt anybody or to cause any problems. She was fasting exactly what God said here, that the, that the yokes would be released, that those that were captive would be set free, that the burdens would be taken care of. Amen. And they would be delivered. There is power in fasting church. And this is what we're trying to do. Amen. It's so important that we do it in the right spirit. And we do it with God's favor. And if I'm crossways with God, do you really think my fasting is going to do a whole lot of good? First thing I got to do is give myself back to Him. I got to get my heart right with Him. Yes. And I can say, oh, yeah, God, I need to do this. You know, that's, we take care of our own mail. We, that's why He said, if ye, there's some things that we. Re, re, if ye break every yoke, you know, if you if you get the stuff out of your life that you know God's not pleased with. And when we do this, it opens up the windows of heaven. God begins to pour out blessings. And he's always done this in this 40 days of fire. He's always blessed. We've had families come into the church. We've had miracles happen. We've had lots of things go on. Amen. Don't think the devil's not going to fight you. Okay. You're not feeling real good? Hang in there. <laughs> Amen. Every preacher feels this on Wednesday night before church starts. Man, like, oh, man, I don't feel good. Uh, oh, we're going to make it. Yeah. And then lo and behold, afterwards, you're like, yeah, I feel good. Yes, amen. Yeah, you know, you wonder, right. what was all that about? Uh, amen. We come against, we wrestle not with flesh and blood, the Bible says, amen. but against principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. The devil don't want us to fast right. He don't care if we fast. He don't want us to fast right. The devil don't care if people get baptized. As long as they don't get baptized in Jesus' name. All right? Amen? He don't care if they talk about the Holy Ghost as long as they don't get it. As long as they've got some feel-good, fuzzy feeling and they're like, Oh yeah, that's it. That's God. And they don't have the Holy Ghost. He is tickled to death. He'll let them run around with that lie as long as he can get them to and cheat them out of being in the presence of God and enjoying the blessings of God like they did in the book of Acts in the early church. Amen. Because they had power with God. And that power is so wonderful because God wants to do this. He wants to work through you. He wants to work through me. And he's using everybody, even the devil. Amen. So we're going to give God glory one way or another. Yeah, Amen. I'd just as soon do it on his terms where he's happy with me. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
and I know you are too. As we stand to our feet tonight, let's pray and ask God to guide us as we continue this journey, that we can bring him honor and that he can bless the fruits of these labors. Father, we are thankful for this opportunity. God, we thank you for your people and the wonderful work you're doing in our hearts. And we ask you to give us wisdom in our journey. Help us to guide others along on this path. Help us, Lord, to be a light and a witness for your glory, Jesus. And may our fasting, may it honor you. May it have the right spirit behind it. May it be something that you can validate. You can bless God so that you can do great works through us, Lord. That's what fasting does. It opens up an opportunity where we are a vessel to you. We reach out to you, and Lord, you honor that effort. Not so that we are something, but because you get all the glory. And we're excited. God, we thank you for healings. We thank you for the miracles. We're getting good reports. We're excited to find out what the initial outcome is, knowing that you'll have your way. And we rejoice in that. Somebody said in Jesus' name. Amen.